Hi, my name is Benedict. I want to walk you through a new freebie device from me called Lusa, subtitled Tape Movement, because it's about creating the kind of movement and smearing, so time and pitch smearing, that we get from analog tape. Uh, it in no way tries to uh, create saturation or anything like that, but that smearing is a kind of saturation of its own. It is a 64-bit Windows VST 3. There is no Mac OS version or plans for that. So sorry if you are afflicted with a boat anchor, uh, but Apple is just too hard to, to play with. I know I have played with, with this concept elsewhere, like with higher hertz, but it's a lot of extra trouble, especially for something that is essentially being given for free. Although putting some value towards this is highly, highly appreciated because it takes, well, probably best part of a day to do something even this simple. Uh, so the link, I'll pop up a, uh, a little card. It's via my uh, Kofi, 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 uh, Please reward people who put something out into the community. Only ever taking doesn't actually help you get ahead. Relationships are what get us places in this business, and money is a big factor in building relationships. If you never pay anyone, they don't pay you back in any way. Alrighty, so let's A, B this fellow. Button one is a dry mix. The mix is exactly the same. Everything is exactly the same, the same mastering. The only difference is that in each instance here, we have a looser plugin sitting on each of the devices. So it is like we've put everything to tape, including the bass and the reverb, and then the masters, possibly overdone, but I'm just looking for a very clear dramatic AB as a result of doing nothing but using the default preset. So here's the piece through Looser. Please don't be judging the piece of music, it's garbage, it's a demo, and here is without. Without. Now, hopefully what you notice there, and, and the difference is subtle, I'm assuming that you are using a proper system studio monitor speakers, what have you. I'm only in headphones because that's required to do this successfully. If you're just listening on iBuds or whatever, I don't expect you're going to understand the difference. The idea behind this is that, as you probably hopefully noticed, that when the one button's down, everything's very pin sharp. It is a lot brighter but everything's incredibly detailed and as a result is kind of really forward in your face and quite flat. So there's a kind of a lack of movement, a lack of feeling organic or real. When we switch to the version where everything has been lucid, then we do have more movement. Yes, we lose some pin sharpness, but that pin sharpness is a hallmark of digital. It's great but it can be just a little bit too much. There are possibly certain things I would do to ameliorate that. Possibly I would even pull a couple of the instances off here uh, because it's probably excessive. But as I said at the beginning, we want a clear differentiation here so that you can hear, okay, well, that's what that's going to do to my mix. You can use this creatively. And when we look through the walkthrough, then you will see how sort of far you can go with it but it is primarily designed for myself to be able to put across a mix like this, to put an instance either on each instrument or on buses um, or even into the masters. I've got another device which I use for that, uh, but I replaced that here so that we were very consistent and it was a clear kind of an AB. The only difference between those being instances of looser. So warmer, things seem to sort of settle into a space more than everything just being kind of flat in your face. Now, I know some people think that flat in your face is good mixing. It's actually poor mixing uh, because nothing has a focus. In here, yes, there's no particular 
attempt to move focus other than to show how focus moves. So what I would do there is with things like, say, the drum, in the drum loop, you can hear a little eh, ah, ah. Uh, that is not quite as immediate as in the untreated version. Because that's very forward and clear, but there's no sense of depth around it. So in a mix where this was being used, I like the general sense of space where we're like, ooh, now that ah, floats a little bit, I would just find some way to put that in space a little bit better. Whether that be through effects is probably just an EQ thing, uh, but this is all part of it. You've got to hear what's happening and then balance around it. Ways to use it could be to do your whole mix and then drop them in, as I did here, uh, and I commonly do with saturation, uh, or to put these right in right at the beginning. Every instrument goes in with a looser attached to it, and then you mix around it. Either way is perfectly okay. Righto. Again, if you want this, please, you need to go through my Ko-fi account. Uh, it says you can get it for as little as zero dollars, but I would really appreciate uh, any amount of money that you put on it. Because remember, again, if you only ever take things, no one's going to give you anything. And that includes fans. You need to commit to this industry. Uh, if you are looking for any kind of help or support, you must watch this video first. If you come to me and you clearly haven't watched the video, please don't expect any support. If you do have a support request, make sure it goes on this YouTube video. I do not want to and will not support this through endless PMs, especially if you didn't RTFM, which is this video. Alrighty, part two, walkthrough. So this is what the device looks like. Very simple. Installation, you will get a folder. And in that zip, you need to unzip it, which will just naturally open in Windows. Anyway, you will have the VST3, which is in a folder with some random garbagey looking files. Put that whole folder here, VST3, looser, put that into OSC, Program Files, Common Files, VST3. You take the whole folder and you put it in. I've put it under my own name, obviously, to make it easier to find it. You toss the whole thing in. It should look like this when it goes in. Presets are equally named. Find where your door stores VST3 presets. That may require a little bit of effort. Like in Reason here, I can open and then I can track through this to find where they have gone. In Windows, it seems to default to users uh, and what have you, but this can vary from person to person and how they have set things up. So it's on you and your door to establish where the presets should go, provided you actually want them. There is no drama with not having them, in which case we'll look at presets. I've got a set of presets here. Uh, they just vary initially in intensity of how much of this, of this is happening. Drunk for those crazy lo-fi people. A flanger showing that yes, you can get into flanging, which we'll look at, and then really kind of nothing presets. Uh, I just needed to make eight because that was the way the system works. You can have one preset or eight, so seeing people want presets. Here's what it does. We're going to use a melodic sound because it's easier to hear what's happening. If you need to bypass, use your doors bypass function. The whole concept here, again, is of tape movement. Tape generally creates two kinds of movement, normally both at once by the time you've got significant movement. So the first is wow, which is like this. You can hear this wandering like vibrato, but slow. Once it gets enough to really be noticeable, there is something wrong with your tape machine. Very wrong. Good quality, well-maintained tape machines 
not highly noticeable. This obsession with like everything being is whatever. The, you can just get to there. Good on you if that's what you want to do as a as a creative thing. But that is not good tape. This button obviously just gives you more or less. So that you can set your default wow, which is just speed movement. Then we've got flutter. Flutter is where the tape itself starts to vibrate. And so you can get this sort of thing. A kind of ghastly FM or AM kind of result. Obviously excessive, but part of the reason that it's allowed to go into excessive numbers is so that you can pick where you want that to be. Let's say we want it to be, because it mostly affects high frequencies. That's probably about right for tape. Then we can pull it right back. If we're really hearing this, like if we're able to say, oh, I can hear that, then it's probably too much. Because as I say, decent quality tape, you can't hear it. By the time you're getting into this sort of crazy lo-fi hipster kind of thing, you, you need to go fix your tape unit. Up to you if you want to do it, but it's not the intended function of the machine, even though it will do it. So keep your settings low is the wiser advice. You're merely looking for non-obvious movement, stepping away from that everything is perfect all the time. I deliberately chose an FM synth for this because FM synths are renowned for being very digital and, and well, staying exactly where they were in the first place. So rate and depth of wow, this will go quite fast. But it is designed more to be emphasis emphasized on slower movement. So if you keep it everything in the, the first half of the range is probably reasonable. The flutter is designed to be a lot faster. It will go into your wow space. So you can do things like and so now you've got both of them moving at once, so you get a less regular thing. So if you're not concerned about flutter, and there are very good reasons to not want flutter, uh, then keep this rate lower. If you want it to emulate the flutter thing, and as you can hear, it does have an impact, then move this into the second half of its range and pull your depth right down. We've then got something a little unexpected here, but uh, tape is actually prone to feeding back onto itself a little bit. The heads can pick up what's happening, so they create a feedback. It intensifies the sound a little bit, but seeing the knob is there, I actually set this up so that it can work as a kind of a flanger. Anything in the first little bit is probably what we might refer to as normal for a passably maintained tape unit. Anything higher than that is just becoming creative effect, but by all means use it. This knob will add level. In no way have I attempted to level match because quite honestly it is not necessary. We expect a process like this to change levels and perceptions. If it doesn't, what's the point of it? But if you are using this before your, uh, your line of 27 fuzz units, yes, it may impact the, uh, the, the fuzzfulness just because as you raise this, you're starting to push a little bit more level in. This will naturally create some kind of phasey flangey comb filteriness the more you push it. So it is not intended as such for primary use to be able to do that. But from time to time, you might go, that's pretty funky. In which case, there you go, use it. That's basically it. That's all you need to do with this. I remember with this demo, all I did was drop one into every instance here. Again, it might be a little overkill the number of instances that I've used. You've got to decide, okay, what's the logic behind how I'm using this? Uh, would you have t this, like your, your drums and bass, done to and coming off tape, and then the uh, bus going through tape again? It's possible. 
but it's probably not so likely, in which case that instance there possibly doesn't belong. Um, in the masters, fair enough, because you're going to bounce two tape again, probably, if you're going to go your two-track master, uh, but you might want to use different settings. In this case, I didn't, simply because that two-track master would be a different machine from your 24-track multi-track machine. So just think carefully about, okay, what am I creating here? Don't get pedantic or anal about it, because nobody wins with that, but just think, okay, what's the, what's the actual process? What am I creating? In terms of a saturation, distortion, what have you remembered deliberately, there was none put in here. I have made devices in the past, like space tape, uh, but honestly, I didn't end up digging them and using them. If you're gonna say to me, but, 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 but what should I use? Well, if you're in reason, scream four, does a fabulous tape. Soft tubes free. You gotta give me your email address. Saturation knob is a very fine saturator. If you don't mind spending a couple of dollars, and remember it's worth it, uh, then Hornet's Analog Stage. This isn't the latest version of it, but Hornet's Analog Stage, particularly in tube, is a very fine thing. Almost every one of my mixes has analog stage dropped in. So that's a, up to you which way you go, but they're all fine ways of adding a little bit of saturation, which this is not designed to need to do at all. All right, again, if you have questions, please watch the video first. Follow the instructions on how to install. Uh, follow your door as to how to access presets, should that be the path that you are looking to go down. If you do have questions, make sure they're on this YouTube video, not in PMs or anything like that, because it's just not cool. This is a free thing. Let's discuss this publicly, and somebody else may have an answer for you as well. Again, to pick this up, uh, you can download it for free if you so choose. I, If I were looking at this and going, oh, I, I think that's interesting, I'm going to try that, then yeah, I would download it for free. If I find that I'm using it, then I would go back and actually pay. All right, that's it from me. Enjoy the unit. If you do anything cool with it, again, on the YouTube video, link to that. Not ego posting, please. They will just disappear very fast as soon as I find them. Uh, important. Get out there, have fun. If you do enjoy the unit, then there is also the R3 500 analog rooms available on Kofi as well. You have a great day.